Jim Miller, writer, executive producer, media consultant, wrote books on ESPN, Saturday Night Live, and, of course, a creative artist agencies, uh, agency. And he's uh, currently working on a book about HBO. Jim, thanks for joining us. I thought of you when this Tony Romo story hit because I figured – you would have some inside knowledge about this, about what it means to the business and what's it mean for other analysts at other networks here. So where do you want to start with Tony Romo's contract? Well, I mean, look, I think there are a lot of people saying, of course, he was going to stay. And I, I don't think you need a triple digit IQ to figure that out. It was always going to be, I mean, CBS was in a really tough position if they lost him because they're trying to do everything they can to hold on to that Sunday afternoon schedule, particularly after Les Moonves left the company, you know you have to remember that Les was a was a huge advantage for CBS because of his the relationship he had with Robert Kraft and a lot of owners in the league. It was always, if you remember, when Thursday Night Football came up, CBS won that right out of the gate, and I think a lot of that credit has to go to Les. So they were in a tough position. They knew that ESPN, in particular, wanted Romo. And what they did was they threw out a huge, huge number before ESPN could even even throw out a bid. I, I don't think, I, I, I really don't believe that ESPN would have gone as high as, as CBS did. I, and I believe the real number is more like 17-7 because there's a lot of private travel involved. Mm-hmm. What do you think ESPN does now? Well, I think they have to have plan B, C, D, E. I mean, uh, it's it's hard. It's it's really hard because you can't you can't as as ESPN learned with Monday Night Football, you just can't all of a sudden produce these people out of thin air. Um, it takes a lot of reps. It takes you you need to know that you have somebody who can actually do the job. And by the way, we should say both on air and in the truck because that's another big part of it. So I mean, look, this reminds me a lot, Dan. I'm sure you remember in the early '90s when Madden was at CBS, Madden and Pat Summerall were at CBS, and all of a sudden NBC made an offer, ABC Monday Night Football made an offer, uh, Madden at one point, he was actually, I think it was like around two or two and a half million he was going to get at CBS, and Fox made an offer of four million or four and a half million, and Madden still turned it down, and then they came back with... $30 Thirty million for four years. Like, I think it was like <laughs> over seven million. And Madden goes, "Yeah, on second thought, I, I think I'll go to Fox." You know, I mean, at some point, the money just becomes crazy. And uh, I think there's one other thing that was sorry to ramble, but I think there's one other thing going on, which is CBS lost the SEC to ESPN. And if you're in a position where you're losing the SEC mm. and Romo, and all of a sudden you're heading into the NFL negotiations without him. Um, that's a good I point. That, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Do you think ESPN stands pat with their Monday night lineup? I think that they are going to probably, I can imagine them simulcasting Monday night on ESPN and ABC and also going after the Sunday, a Sunday afternoon package. Uh, I think that, you know, one of the things that, we should remember about Bob Iger staying on at least as chairman for the next couple of years is he's going to be there throughout this new round of NFL rights. And Bob Iger loves the NFL. In fact, that was probably the biggest area of contention between Bob and John Skipper when Skipper was there, because I don't believe Skipper would have even gone for the, another NFL package. And so Bob's got Jimmy Pitaro in the, in ESPN who, who loves the, NFL just as much as he does, and I think you'll see them go for, you know, Monday Night Football and and an additional game. What about their uh, team, their Monday Night team, with Booger McFarlane and Joe Tessitore? Do you think they uh, keep that team? How, how about those Knicks? <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 think it's, um, I think it's tough. I think it's tough. There's been a lot of learning curves, both inside the truck and and with the team, and some of it is you know, you can't really point your finger at one particular person or whatever, but I think that there's, I, I think there's a lot of momentum inside for 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 change. But again, you know, uh, I mean, there's some really interesting, talented people out there, but there's not an abundance. And so, if you're, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I think Romo's people had such an advantage because it's definitely it's definitely a buyer's market. Does an announcer mean that much? Make that much of a difference? 
Yeah, so that's the ultimate question, right? I mean, look, if there's a CBS game on two years from now and it's a great matchup, are people going to be saying, if they hadn't signed Romo, they'd be saying, you know, we're not going to watch because of Romo. I don't think so, but I think it it adds to the entire patina of of, of the network. I think it's I think it's one of those things that um, I believe sometimes an announcer and an announcing team can keep people engaged on a on a game that maybe is already over. I think there are some advertisers who believe that. They certainly did that, believe that with Madden and Semerol, because you're just kind of hanging out with them. Then, yeah. You know, and 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 people did that with Tony. And it was like, uh, you know, somebody the other day, David Beckham said the other day that he never left the Lakers game early as long as, even if it was a blowout, as long as Kobe was on the court. And I think that, in a, you know, not as a, in a dramatic way, and it's not a direct comparison, but I think there are people that really, really enjoy Tony Romo, and they love watching him predict things, and they like the way that he analyzes things, and so it's hanging out with somebody, and it, it does give it a finish. It does give it a finish when you're going in front of the committee and you're trying to, uh, you know, get those rights. I mean, obviously, it's, it's really about dollars, but I think it helps. Yeah, I have no problem with his salary because I just it, this is a TV show. And if you said this was Big Bang Theory, nobody complained when Jim Parsons got a hundred million dollars for being Sheldon on the Big Bang Theory. It you know it it gets a lot of eyeballs. It's three hours, four hours of entertainment. Uh, the other things that you use Romo for, that's fine. I I mean I I have no issue with it. Is there a sticker well, shock I, for you? I I. I I mean, look, I did not predict it would go as high, I, that, that high, but uh, I actually believe that one of the legacies of, when you talk about the NFL and television through the decades, one of the legacies is that money that you think is a lot at the time winds up not being a lot. We were just talking about Madden, and CBS lost the rights to the NFC package for like $400 million to Fox. Look at $400 million is <laughs> nothing. Yeah. You lose that. I mean, that's like, that's like, you know, quarters in the couch that you find. I mean, and yet look what it did for Fox and CBS had to have its nose pressed up against the window waiting to get it again. Um, so, and that same thing happened with NBC when it lost and then it, you know, finally came back with Sunday night football. But I think that one of the things with NFL is it's still in a way, America's crack cocaine. It's still going to get, even though, you know, there'd be seasons where, oh, the number's down a little bit or whatever, um, particularly in this crazy fractured universe, it's, it's, it's a very stable, uh, viewership and, uh, you got to spend the money. That's not the official tagline for the NFL 2020. We're just like crack cocaine. That's not official, right? I think it's in second place. I'm okay. not sure what okay. first place is, but <laughs> I, I'm not, they're working on it. It's a, it's a big internal debate. But the one thing that's for sure is that they're going to have a lot of bidders, and the money's going to be it's going to be ridiculous. I mean, this should be this. This is like a little warning sign that we're about to get into some crazy, crazy dollars. If you heard something about me or this show, would you report it or would you call me first? Uh, let's see, no, I would text you. I okay, would, I would text you. Okay. All right. Yeah. You I haven't would, heard anything, would, right? Like, like what? I don't know. I'm just. I, like that don't oh. mean to sound no, paranoid. I would, I would, I would text. Well, first of all, I would text you because I would want to confirm anything. Okay. And uh, if if nothing else, but I would also want to want to hear your side of it. Yeah, of course. Okay. I, in fact, I think uh, through the years that's that's actually happened a couple of times. Yes, it has. You're a journalist, and you would always say, "Hey, I'm hearing this," and then you would. Then I would pause for a few seconds or a minute or maybe an hour, and then I'd decide to get back to you. Because I, I, I knew you were right. I just, I just wanted to know how, lo- how do I spin this and how long do I wait to get back to you? But, uh, you know, that was when, yeah, no, you, it- you know, you were doing your ESPN book and, you know, you're not doing another ESPN book. So I'm in the clear here. Well, not yet. <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you. And uh, thanks for joining us as always. Thanks for having me. That's uh, James Andrew Miller, Jim Miller.